All right. So we're about at 12.03 on my clock. I imagine you guys uh, are uh, in various time zones across the country. But uh, welcome. I appreciate everybody tuning in. My name is Matt Drake. Uh, I'm part of the group uh, who has helped host this virtual boot camp. Uh, and we appreciate all the residents as well as um, all our facilitators for making this possible. Today we have a great session. Dr. Joseph Smith from Indiana University is going to be talking about ARD's best practice. And he's got a whole team here working with him. I'll let uh, Dr. Smith do the introduction. Thanks for having me. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the ARDS uh, boot camp session. I'm going to introduce my the fellows here. So Russell Treganis is a critical care fellow. Uh, Roberta Suazo, Marcella Azevedo, Dwayne Allen, Francesca Duncan, Claire Prohaska are all our IU Pulmonary Critical Care Fellows. And then there's myself here. I'll, I'll also lead a small group. I want to uh, just tell these guys how much I appreciate their help um, post-COVID surge here uh, with uh, helping out with this session. So. I'll uh, go ahead and get started. This is going to be a brief um, overview before we dive into the details of uh, ARDS best practice and small group sessions. So I don't have any conflict of, conflicts of interest. Again, this will be a short presentation, sort of a how-to approach this workshop and a brief ARDS overview. We'll hit the details in the small group. So all the ARDS best practices you'll learn with uh, our fellows and myself in your small group. So a little bit here, the main learning again is gonna occur, occur in your small groups. Spend time to ask questions and understand best practices of ARDS when you're in those small groups. And please try to open up your video when you're in your small groups so we can really interact uh, together. You may not get through all the case questions in an hour. There's about 14 case questions. Um, the last topics are the very advanced topics for patients with very severe ARDS and the bread and butter is early. So if you don't get through those last questions, don't worry too much. Uh, the preceptor version of the cases will be available on the wiki page, and you can use that case discussion and reference list as a foundation for your future learning as you get into those more advanced cases during fellowship. So ARDS, uh, just briefly, was defined first by Ashwall in 1967. And then by 2012, we had the, uh, a more consistent definition both for research and for clinical care. It focuses on four areas. One is timing. So the um, onset of the respiratory symptoms has to be within one week of a clinical onset. So a, an acute illness. And then chest imaging. We want to see bilateral opacities. Uh, it doesn't matter the type of imaging, just we need imaging. So CT scan or chest radiograph. And then the origin of the uh, infiltrates and the respiratory failure shouldn't be fully explained by cardiac failures. There needs to be some objective assessment saying that this is not just heart failure. And then oxygenation is the last part. A P to F of less than 300 uh, is, is mild ARDS. And then as you go down to less than 200, moderate, less than 100 is severe ARDS. So a brief uh, review of the physiology. Now, this is super brief, um, the pathophysiology. So you have some lung injury, whether that be pneumonia or an extrapulmonary sepsis, um, aspiration uh, injury, and then that causes a cascade of cytokine, cytokine signaling, which results in endothelial injury to both the capillaries and the alveoli, which respectively causes uh, capillary leak and interstitial edema and loss of surfactant. Then you get into a repair phase, which is called the proliferative phase, which eventually results in about 60% of patients in a diffuse alveolar damage, final histology. So again, this is super brief, but we're focusing on ARDS best practices today, so I'm going to keep going forward here. The clinical consequences of this process is what we all see at the bedside, hypoxemia, reduced ability to ventilate, reduced lung volume and reduced compliance. And as we try to help our patients, we fear causing ventilator-induced lung injury, or VILI, which is volume trauma, alveolar overdistension, atelic trauma, alveolar collapse, and opening and closing of the alveoli. 
biotrauma, which is the inflammatory cascade, which can be worsened by our ventilator-induced uh, lung injury. And then barotrauma, which I tend to wrap up in the volutrauma, but it's the high inflation pressure-related injury to the lung. If you come away with nothing from this talk, the main thing that I want you to come away from the uh, small group sessions from are these four main ideas. That you need to identify air deaths early so you can avoid ventilator-induced lung injury. We don't always pay attention to the ARDS ventilator settings if we don't know that the patient has ARDS. You have to identify it early. Use low tidal volume ventilation, shooting for about six mils per kg predicted body weight. When you have moderate to severe ARDS, we tend to use a higher PEEP strategy, which again, we'll get into these details in a moment. And in patients with severe ARDS, we want to prone early and prone long. So these details, again, we're going to get into in our small groups. This is uh, one of your pre-reading assignments. Um, this is a great algorithm from Fan and colleagues in 2017. And it just really goes through, I think, very nicely the process of taking care of somebody with ARDS. And as they get more severe, how to, how to go about caring for them. So refer to that as you go through with your small groups. And then again, we've got our small group leaders, which we'll break out in here into a moment. Um, a couple of hints here, the patient in the case um, is actually 65 inches tall, not 60 inches tall. Apologize for that error. Um, and please, 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 after this session is over, don't hesitate to email me with any questions. My email address is jps2 at iu.edu. Um, what's going to happen now is we're all going to jump into separate breakout rooms and uh, about 15 of you at a time will be uh, connected with one of the fellows or myself as a small group discussion preceptor. Perfect. Uh, I'm about to send everybody into the breakout rooms. Our breakout rooms are actually a little bit smaller than uh, we initially expected. So if uh, uh, it's going to be great for interaction. If anybody is delayed in getting into the room, I'll make sure you get to the sign there. So no worries. Bear with me for just a sec. 